Hey everybody, it's High Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So in this one, we're actually going to go ahead and cover the monthly temperature and precipitation outlook. Really just getting an overview of what we can expect for this month now. Uh, anyone that's been watching for a little while, you know we always try to do these videos towards the beginning of the month, if it's at all possible. Sometimes whenever severe weather or hurricane season gets too busy, it gets a little tricky. But um, if you watched the preview we did a couple of weeks ago, you'll notice a few changes here. Uh, one thing that in particular should capture yours and both captures my eye is over here towards the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the northern states here. This is the first time I've seen a, an area this large showing equal chance of precipitation in a little bit here. And this is actually going to be do a lot to what is expected within the next couple weeks. We could actually have a little cool down here over towards these regions. There could be a cool down across the board for most of the nation here, especially over towards the east. There's still going to be plenty of ridging out west. And this is why there's such heightened confidence in the above average temperatures over there. We're in the 70 to 80 percentile range there. And then interestingly enough, there's going to be another ridge that tries to pop up over here towards the southeast. And with that being the case, we could see in increased probability of above average temperatures here as well you can see it getting into the 16 70 percentile range over towards the southeast coast here through florida and then through parts of the gulf coast interestingly enough we go over towards the gulf coast let's say over towards texas we're starting to see those equal chances coming up as well as over towards the west coast so there's going to be some big changes in this month this would almost i would say act almost like how uh, September sometimes would be when we start to uh, transition into fall a little bit more. Uh, usually I would expect August to be a little bit hotter. I mean, it still is, but we might see a few more areas catching more breaks, so to speak. The heat still will be on though, so don't, so don't uh, take it lightly or anything, but we might have a few more days here where the weather's a little bit more bearable for some of us. Also, another thing to make note of, and while I know it's not super prevalent to a lot of people, Alaska is always a point that I watch because that kind of gives me an idea of what to expect, especially over towards maybe the Northwest or over even towards the Midwest, depending on how the jet stream looks. Right now, of course, jet stream's a little further to the North, so we'll probably see maybe some cooler than average temperatures over towards Canada, but in particular, uh, Alaska towards the western part of the state looks like it's going to be below average in regards to temperatures over towards the northeast we're still above average so we're kind of we're kind of dealing with a mixed bag here still and it's always hardest to read it when it's like that but regarding the precipitation here is something interesting to note about Alaska seeing a much larger area of above average chances for precipitation here there's not really any areas that are expecting below average precip uh, precip at this point now we're actually going to be expecting an equal chance even over towards the southeastern part of the state here. So things are going to I do think at some point we're going to start to have this pattern shift and maybe even the northeast will start to get into an a, into the uh, action a bit more. Another thing to make note of here, and this is over towards the Great Lakes and some of the Midwest here, northern tiers states, so to speak. We're going to start to see a more active pattern over there. We've, we're starting to see signs of that already, but it's only going to develop further as we go through the month. We'll also see increased precipitation over towards the northeast. This area over here towards the southeast coast and the Gulf Coast, it's going to be a little bit of a question mark. As we know, we're, expect, we're still expecting an active hurricane season. There is a system that we're watching in the tropics right now. There's a pretty high chance of development. We're going to talk about that more in a video tomorrow. But in any case, though, while right now the above average precip chances are only at 40 to 50 percent over the course of the week to week basis, this is actually going to be a little bit higher than that. Another thing I'm making note of here, and this is really the first time in a while that I've seen this signal, is the increased chance of precipitation over towards the southwest now. We've been anticipating that monsoonal flow beginning to come in at long last year, and we've been starting to see an increase in storm activity. However, it's been a little bit more few and far in between. I think we're going to start to see a little bit more in the way of concentration in regards to that, but we're still kind of up in the air in regards to how that's going to pan out. We'll be able to get a little bit of a better look at what could be expected this month, but 
course looking over almost a full month in advance eh, could be some variabilities there but that being said let's go ahead and get into my favorite part of doing this and that's looking at the oscillations here we're looking for pressure here the red area is a high pressure the blue area is a lower pressure the uh, higher pressure areas whenever we see that over the north pole here we can sometimes start to see opportunities for cold air to sneak into the northern states and that's really for any time of year you see this especially during the winter time as well but it's also interesting to note that right over here towards greenland this is another oscillation the north atlantic oscillation whenever we see low pressure there it's another opportunity for cold air to sneak into the northern states and then also seeing this little blob of uh cold air here up towards this level of the atmosphere also is a sign of a little bit of a pattern change as we go forward here and you'll actually begin to see a reflection of that as we go into the next slide here this is us looking at august 8th now so we go towards the 15th look at that that lower pressure starts to sneak into those northern states and we get a little bit of a cool air mass here and also an interesting thing to note we still have a pretty considerable amount of pressure over here towards the ao this is what you would call a positive ao stage and you see this uh, lower pressure over here towards the North Atlantic Oscillation. This is what you would call a negative NAO phase or negative North Atlantic Oscillation. Like I said, those negative North Atlantic Oscillations, you got to be watchful of those because you can end up getting more cold air to the areas like the uh, Great Lakes in the Northeast here. And we're seeing a perfect example of that ongoing as we get towards the middle of the month. So we go further along here, we start to kind of level out just a little bit. We still are kind of in a slight positive phase with the AO here but we're starting to kind of get into the neutral and even beginning to sneak into that positive uh, NAO phase with this as well so we'll start to warm back up of course but even so I'm not expecting anything magnanimous to come of that it's not going to be a strong phase so to speak here maybe not till the beginning of next month here but in any case though we are going to see a little bit of flip-flopping as we go throughout the month here. And you'll see the reflection of that in our uh, temperature anomaly here. This is our temperatures compared to average. These are in Celsius, but I can still give you the rough estimates here just based off of the math, so to speak, here. As far as right now up till next week is concerned, obviously the hottest area is going to be over towards the northwest where we could see temperatures 20 to maybe even 30 degrees above average here. We talked about this in the last video. It's pretty hot over here, of course. Over towards the southeast, it's uh, starting to heat up once again, unfortunately. For those of us that work outside, ouch, we're still dealing with that humidity to go along with it. But watch what happens as we get into next week here. Very interesting to see this across the board. Start to see those below average temperatures sneak into the picture here. In regards to the northern states here, once again, as I mentioned before, we could actually be dealing with maybe up to 15 degrees below average here. So an unseasonably uh, cool air mass is going to sneak in and uh, cause some change here and even for these areas that were well above average we're going to see a decrease in the temperatures as well so it's going to be feeling pretty nice for a lot of us across the u.s here as we go through the middle of the month when we get towards the back half of the month here and head towards the end here we're still kind of above average but it's not anything as significant as what we were previously seeing of course with us being all the way up towards august 22nd by this particular point in time things can change pretty quickly a little smaller scale uh higher low pressure areas and or ridges troughs can come in and change the look of this entirely but if the look continues like this this is not so bad i would say and you even see that towards the end of the month as well that heat does look like it tries to start building back in I did see a couple signals where we would have maybe a new ridge begin to develop over towards the region. Where that ends up is still questionable at this point, obviously, considering we're looking 28 days in advance. As far as the precipitation is concerned, this is going to be extremely variable, especially over towards the southeast. Like I said, there is a tropical system that I'm watching over here right now that's over towards the Caribbean and is most likely going to make its way into the Gulf here. Now, where its exact track is going to end up be, where it's going to uh, end up being at, I'm still uh, still kind of on the fence about it. It could be anywhere in the Gulf Coast. It still could go through Florida and then ride up the East Coast here too. So, 
a little bit questionable as to where our next invest system will end up going. But right now, I'm not sure if I'm ready to latch on to this drier than average look that we have right here for this upcoming week. But we'll see if that ends up uh, verifying or not. Watch what happens though as we get towards the next week. More active pattern here. We start to see an increase in activity over here towards the Gulf Coast in particular. East Coast gets pretty busy as well. Towards the central part of the U.S. has been pretty active. We also look like we have a pretty active pattern over the Ohio Valley in general. And it looks like that's going to continue as we go through the middle of the month. Towards the back half of the month, a lot of the uh, moisture looks like it's kind of reserved more for the southeast. Little pockets here and there over towards maybe the Midwest here. So we look out towards the west. We do have a couple of uh, time frames here where we could have some sneaky moisture here and there. Not anything of major significance, but could be a couple of uh, days where we end up getting those little uh, summertime showers and storms or popcorn storms as I call them. As we get towards the end of the month, of course, Southeast still busy up all the way up into the mid-Atlantic and maybe even parts of the Northeast, but we still have drier conditions kind of building in out West, unfortunately. Wildfires have been a big problem over here and have been a big story as of late. And unfortunately, from the looks of that, that is going to continue. So, like I said, it looks like across the board, a pretty variable month in regards to how our temperature setup is, along with our precipitation. So, one other thing that we'll go ahead and take, a, or a couple other things we'll go ahead and take a look at here. So, we'll kind of go to the data to, to the uh, day to day here. I can, really cannot speak today. And what we'll take a look at here is our upper level pattern here we're going to be looking at the upper jet and we're going to be taking a look at any troughs and ridges that develop here as you can see here's a ridge over here towards the west and that's what's contributing to the dry conditions there and then here's our trough that's been contributing to our severe weather out towards the ohio valley in the midwest and that's going to continue at least over the course of the next few days here eventually though we start to become a little bit more zonal so the weather pat the uh, severe weather stretch is going to slow down ever so slightly as time goes on though new trough looks like it is introduced into the picture here we'll see if this ends up becoming anything of major significance right now i'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards snow as that trough moves out here's that ridge that's over towards the southeast that i was uh, referring to earlier coming into play here but just as quick as that introduces itself it looks like that moves out and we start to maybe get a little bit of a dip in our jet stream here, starting to show itself a little bit more towards the southeast and maybe even towards the Ohio Valley once again towards the middle of the month. So just as quickly as things look like they were going to slow down, they kind of pick back up. We're kind of caught in between this little pocket right here where a ridge is trying to redevelop once again. Eventually it does win out as we get towards the end of the month. And that's how the east is going to end up playing out as far as what our month is concerned, our, what our month is looking like right now. Really cannot speak today. Out west, of course, like I mentioned before, Big Ridge looks to be the main thing that we're going to be dealing with for a good chunk of the month. There is a couple of areas of interest over towards the southwest where we could get a little bit in the way of moisture. We do eventually start to get a little bit of a trough developing over here. And with that, the chance of precipitation could exist a little further along here over towards maybe the Four Corners region as time goes on. Eventually, we start to again become a little bit more zonal. But as a whole here, it looks like as we get towards maybe the end of the month, we start to see more in the way of troughing starting to come in. But like I said, this is pretty variable at this point, and I'm not willing to fully put my faith into something that's nearly 600, 700 hours out at this point. So, of course, it's going to be, no pun intended, a liquid situation, so to speak. We're hoping that these guys up towards the northeast and the or northwest and southwest can get moisture to help with the wildfire situation over there. Last thing we can look at here, and of course, this is only looking at one level of the atmosphere. We can look at several different levels as well to go along with that. But at this range, it's kind of pointless right now. But we can look at what our um, low and high pressures are looking like towards the surface. And this is going to play a big part in the storms we can end up getting. We do get some low pressure areas over here towards the southwest. So that will allot for some chances of storms to develop. 
the time frames might be a little bit debatable and this one thing I don't necessarily like about this particular model but some interesting things to make note of here is you can see that monsoonal flow coming into play here as we go over the course of the next couple of weeks here also as we go towards the southeast here you can see an increase in moisture content as a whole over the course of the next few days and then of course the mystery still remains with where our tropical system may end up at so with that in mind i'm still watching the southeast and watching over towards texas i'm watching towards florida I'm watching up the southeast coast i don't think this system this uh particular model has picked up on it yet though the storm system's over towards cuba right now so i don't think it's going to take too long for it to work its way into the gulf we'll kind of that's why that's the main reason why i said i'll talk about that system more so tomorrow because we'll have fresh model data to kind of go into detail as to what's expected with that a couple other interesting things to make note of here these low pressure features we see in the gulf as well so we continue to go forward here if we go back towards the middle of the month here you can actually see a little feature try to pop up that could be a name storm may not be there's another potential tropical system that forms out in the atlantic See a couple more notable systems as we start to see that little pattern shift that I've mentioned as we get towards the 22nd. So, like I said, a lot of a lot of moving parts in regards to the weather for this month. So I'm kind of I'm kind of on the fence as to what could happen. This seems like it could be kind of a transitional month where we might begin to shift into a uh, more of a fall-like pattern as we get towards maybe September, heading towards October. So, like I said. While right now I would say that it's going to still be warm out towards the west and active out towards the east, I do think we're going to start to, see, to uh, see more of a shift as we get towards the middle to the end of the month. So be on the lookout for that. I do expect a little bit more of a cool down for the lower 48 as a whole as we continue to go forward here. So that's something for you to look forward to. We'll see if we end up getting all that monsoon moisture that I'm hoping will head into the southwest here. If it can go a little further to the west, that'd be even better. So that way, Southern California can get these fires under control. But we'll have another video up tomorrow. We're going to try to get back into the swing of things. And we'll also talk about that new uh, tropical area that we've, well, that we've been talking about over the course of the last week or so. Minus the uh, videos I couldn't make. But that being said, hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. I hope to see you soon. Have a good night.